Murder in the first degree. Premeditated homicide is the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You have heard a long and complex case, and it is now your duty to sit down and try to separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead. The life of another is at stake. If there is a reasonable doubt in your mind as to the guilt of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. If, however, there is no doubt, then you must find him guilty. Whichever way you decide, the verdict must be unanimous. I urge you to deliberate honestly and thoughtfully. You are faced with a grave responsibility. Thank you. The jury will retire. He doesn't stand a chance. Thank you, but no. You know something? I know lots of things. I've been advertising. You know it's hot. I'd never have known that if you hadn't told me. Would you? I suppose not. I've kind of forgotten. Oh, I've done all day is sweat. I bet you aren't sweating like that kid who was dry. <laughs> you think they'll just air condition the place? I'll drop dead in court. My taxes are high enough. This should go fast anyway. Yes, it is hot. Okay, everyone's here. If you want anything, I'm right outside. Just knock. Did she just lock that door? Yes, she did. What do they think we are, crooks? They lock us up for a little while. And then they lock up that kid forever, and that's okay with me. I didn't know they did that. Sure they locked the door. What did you think? I just didn't know. It never occurred to me. Shall we all admit right now that it is hot and humid and our tempers are short? It's been a pretty hard week. I feel just fine. I wonder how things are down at the office. You know, it isn't advertising. In six days, my job could be gone, and the entire company, too. They aren't going to like this. Oh, figure this is our duty. I didn't object to doing my duty. I just mentioned I might not have a job by the time I get back. Ask her to help you. She's between look at her outfit. I'm sure her husband can get you a job. Is it custom tailored? Yes, it is. I have an aunt who's a tailor. How does she do? Not too well. You know, a friend of hers, that's friend of my aunt's, well, they wanted to be on this jury in my place. So why didn't you let her? I would have done anything miss this. And get caught or something? You know what kind of fine you can pay for anything like that? <coughs> well, this friend was on a jury about 10 years ago. A case just like this one. So what happened? They let him off, reasonable doubt. And you know, about eight years later, they found out he actually did it anyways. A guilty man, a murderer, loose in the streets. Did they get him? They couldn't. Why not? A man can't be held in double jeopardy. Unless it's a hung jury, you can't try a man twice for the same crime. That isn't going to happen here. Six days. It should have finished it in two. I mean, it was just talk, talk, talk. Did you hear so much talking about nothing? Well, I guess they're entitled. Everyone gets a fair trial. That's the system. Suppose you can't say anything against it. How would you like the business about the knife? Did you ever hear a phonier story? Well, you gotta expect that. You know what you're dealing with. He bought a switch knife that night. And then he lost it. A hole in his pocket. A hole in his father. <laughs> Awful way to kill your father. Knife in the chest. Well, you know what kind of people they are. You gotta expect that, you know? Achoo! Well, what's the matter? Got a cold? <laughs> yeah, these summer colds can kill you. Uh, I had them last year. Well, I was on vacation, so... All right, let's take seats. Right. Let's make this quick. I've got to take a seat footloose for tonight. I must be the only guy in the world from seeing it. All right, Your Honor, set the show. How about sitting down? The gentleman at the window? Oh. How about sitting down? Sorry. It's up the figure in it. A, kill, a kid kills his father. Bing! Just like that. Well, it's the element. They let the kids run wild. Maybe it serves them right. There's no point in getting emotional about it. It's a question of evidence, not how we feel. We all agree that it was hot. And that our tempers are short. Well, that's only if we disagree. But this is open and shut. Let's get it done. Okay, now you all can handle this any way you want. I'm not going to make any rules or anything. If we want to talk about it first and then vote, that's one way. Or we can vote now and see where we stand. Let's vote now. Who knows? Maybe we can all go home. Yeah, let's see who's where. All right, let us vote. All right, anybody doesn't want to vote? All right, all those voting guilty, raise your hands. 11, that's 11 for guilty, not guilty. Hey, you're left field. Okay, the vote is 11 guilty, one not guilty. Now we know where we stand. Do you really think he's not guilty? I don't know. Six days, and he doesn't know. Oh, in six days, I could learn calculus. This is ABC. I don't think this is as simple as ABC. I've never seen a guilty man in my life. What does a guilty man look like? 
He's not guilty until we say he's guilty. Are we to judge on his face? You sat in court, heard the same things I did. The man's a dangerous killer. You could see it. Where do you look to see if a man is a killer? Oh, well. I'm serious. Tell me what the facial characteristics of a killer are. Maybe you know something I don't. Look, what is there about the case that makes you think the boy is innocent? He's 19 years old. That's old enough. He knifed his father four inches into the chest. I mean, so much for a poor innocent little kid. I agree with you that the boy is guilty, but I think we should try to avoid emotionally colored arguments. All right, they proved it a dozen different ways. Do you want me to list them? No. Do you believe that stupid story he told? Now, now. Do you believe the kid's story? I don't know whether I believe it or not. Maybe I don't. So what did you vote not guilty for? There were 11 votes for guilty. It's not so easy for me to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Who says it's easy for me? Or me. No one. He's still just as guilty whether it's an easy vote or a hard vote. Is there something wrong because I voted fast? Not necessarily. Well, I think the guy's guilty. You can change your mind if we talk about it for a hundred years. I don't want to change your mind. Just what are you thinking of? I want to talk for a while. Look, this kid <coughs> has been kicked around his whole life. His mother dead since he was nine, raised in a slum. That's not a very good head start. He's a tough, angry kid. And you know why some kids get that way? Because we bash him over the head once a day, every day. I think we owe him a few words. That's all. All right, it's hard, chore. Everything I've got, I fought for. I worked my way through college. That was a long time ago, and perhaps you do forget. I fought, yes, but I never killed. I know it's like, I never killed nobody. I have a picture on too. Wait until you've worked in the ad agency and the big boy that buys all the advertisements walks in. We all know. In my country, kicking was a science, but let's try and find something better than that. Look, I don't mind telling you this, mister. We don't owe that kid a thing. He got a fair trial, didn't he? You know what that trial cost? He's lucky he got it. Look, we're all grown ups here. You're not going to tell us that we're supposed to believe him knowing what he is. I've lived among them all my life. You can't believe a word they say. You know that. I don't know that. What a terrible thing for a person to believe. Since when is dishonesty a group characteristic? You have no monopoly on the truth. All right, save it for Sunday. We don't need a sermon. What this woman says is very dangerous. I don't see any need for arguing like this. I think we ought to behave like respectable people. Right. All right. Only if you insist. Thank you. Sure. If we're going to discuss this case, why, let's discuss the facts. I think that's a good point. We have a job to do. Let's do it. If you all don't mind, I'm going to close the window. It's blown on my neck. I'd like to have the window open. But it's blowing on me. Don't you want a little air? It's summer, it's hot. I'm very uncomfortable. Well, there are 12 of us in this room, if you don't mind. <clears throat> I have some rights, too. So do the rest of us. Couldn't you trade chairs with someone at the other end of the table? All right, I will leave the window open if someone would trade. Here, take my chair. Thank you. Shall we get back to the case? Yeah, let's. I don't know about you guys. I'm just thinking out loud right now. But I think that it's up to us to prove to this gentleman that we're right and he's wrong. Why don't we all talk for a minute or two, you know, try it on for size. That sounds fair. Very fair. Supposing we all speak. All right, let's do it. All right, you are generous enough to switch seats. Why don't you start? Oh, well, I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious. In what way was it obvious? I mean that nobody proved otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. It's innocent until proven guilty. The burden of proof lies on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't have to open their mouth. That's in the Constitution, the Fifth Amendment. You've heard of it. Everyone has. <laughs> I've heard of it, and I know what it is. It's just, well, what I, I just think he's guilty. No reasons, just guilty. There's a life at stake here. Okay, let's get to the facts. Number one, let's take the old man who lived on the second floor apartment right under the room where the murder took place. At 10 minutes after 12, on the night of the killing, he heard loud noises coming from the upstairs apartment. He said it sounded like a fight. Then he heard the kid say to his father, I'm gonna kill you. A second later, he hears a body falling, so he runs to the front door of his apartment, and what does he see? The kid running down the stairs and out of the house. Then he called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. And the coroner fixed the time of death at around midnight. Right. Now what else do you want? Doesn't seem to fit. The boy's entire story is flimsy. He claimed he was at the movies. That's a little ridiculous, isn't it? He couldn't even remember what picture he saw. Right. Did you hear that? You're absolutely right. He didn't have any ticket stub. Who keeps a ticket stub at the movies? That's true enough. I suppose, but the cashier didn't remember him. Ticket taker didn't either. Look, what about the woman across the street? If her testimony don't prove it, then nothing does. That's right. She saw the killing, didn't she? All right, let's go in order. Just a minute. 
But here's a woman who's lying in bed and can't sleep. It's hot, you know? Anyway, she wakes up and looks outside, and right across, and right across the street, she sees the kid stick the knife into his father. How could she be sure it was the kid when she saw through the windows of a passing elevated train? She's known the kid all his life. His window is right opposite hers, across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do I it. I heard her swear to it. Okay. And they proved it in court that you can look through the windows of a passing old train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it. Weren't you telling us just a second ago that you can't trust them, that you can't believe them? So? Let me ask you something. She's one of them, too, isn't she? How come you can trust her? You're a pretty smart fellow, aren't you? Now take it easy. Come on, sit down. What are you letting him get you all upset for? Relax. Everyone, they did take us to the woman's room and we looked through the windows of a passing elevated train, didn't we? We did. And weren't you able to see what happened on the other side? Not as well as they told me I would see, but I saw what happened on the other side. You see? Do you see? Let's calm down now. It's your turn. I'll pass it. That's your privilege. How about you? I don't know. I mean, I started to be convinced, you know, with the testimony from the people across the hall. Didn't he say something about a fight between the boy and his father around Seven o'clock that night? I mean, I can be wrong. I think it was eight o'clock, not seven. That's right, eight o'clock. They heard the father hit the boy twice and then saw the boy walk angrily out of the house. Right. What does that prove? Well, it doesn't necessarily prove anything. It's just a part of the picture. I didn't say it proved anything. Anything else? No. I don't know. I think most of it's said already. We can sit around and talk all day about this thing, but I think we're wasting our time. I don't. Neither do I. Go on. Let's look at the kid's record. He's been arrested for mugging. He's still in the car. <laughs> I think they said he stabbed someone in the arm. They did. He's been picked up for knife fighting. At 15, he was in reform school. They sent him to reform school for stabbing someone. This is obviously a very fine boy. Ever since he was five years old, his father beat him regularly. He used his fists. So did I. A kid like that. You're right. It's the kids these days. The way they are, they don't listen. I've got a kid. When he was eight years old, he ran away from a fight, and I saw him. I was so, so ashamed, you know. I told him right out. I'm going to make a man out of you, or I'm going to bust you into pieces. Try. You know, I haven't seen him in three years, but, but that's because he's a rotten kid. I hate tough kids. You work your heart out, and... All right, let's get on with it. We're missing the point here. Let's say the boy's a product of a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. We can't help that. We're not going to go into the reasons why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. They are, I know it, so do you. The children that come out of these slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. You said it there. I don't want any part of them. Believe me. I've lived in a slum all my life. No, wait a second! I used to play in a backyard filled with garbage. Maybe it still smells on me. Now let's be reasonable. There's something personal. There is something personal! Come on, she didn't mean you. Who did she mean? I can understand the sensitive. Now let's stop bickering. We're wasting time. It's your turn. All right. I had a peculiar feeling about this case. Somehow I felt that the defense counsel never really conducted a thorough cross-examination. Too many questions were never asked. While it doesn't change my opinion of the guilt of the boy, still I agree with you, the defense counsel was bad. So? This is the point. What about the facts? Too many questions were never answered. What about the questions that were answered? For instance, let's take that cute little switchblade that fine upright kid admitted to buying. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get it in here and let's look at it. I'd like to see the knife again, Miss Foreman. We all know what it looks like. I don't see the point if we look at it again. What do you think? The gentleman has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Okay with me. We all agreed that the switch knife was a pretty strong piece of evidence, didn't we? We did. Now let's get the sequence of events right as they relate to the switch knife. The boy and Mrs. Thorne out of the house after being slapped by his father. Or punched. Or punched. He went to the neighborhood store and bought a switch knife. The storekeeper was arrested the following day when he admitted selling it to the boy. I think we can all agree that this is an unusual night. I mean, kind of hard to forget something like that. The storekeeper identified it as the only one of its kind he had in stock. Why did the boy get it? As a present for a friend of his, he says. <laughs> Am I right so far? Right. Next, the boy claims that on the way home, the knife fell through a hole in his coat pocket, that he never saw it again. Now there's a story. You know what happened. The boy took the knife home and a few hours later stabbed his father with it. He didn't even remember to wipe up the fingerprints. Everyone connected with the case identified this knife. 
Are you trying to tell me that someone picked it up off the street, went to the boy's father's house, and stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No, I'm saying that it's possible that he did lose the knife and that someone else stabbed the father with a similar knife. It's possible. Take a look at that knife. It's a very strange knife. I've never seen one like it before in my life. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to him. Aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make anyone accept anything. I'm just saying it's possible. And I'm saying it's not possible! What are you trying to do? Yeah, what is this? Who do you think you are? Look at it, it's the same knife! Why? Let's be quiet. Where did you get it? I bought it at a little junk shop across the corner from the boy's house. It cost two dollars. Now listen to me. I'm listening. You pulled a real smart trick here, but you proved absolutely zero. Say there's ten knives like that. So what? Maybe there are. The boy lied and you know it. But maybe he didn't lie. And maybe he did lose the knife. And maybe he did go to the movies. And maybe the reason the cashier didn't remember him was because he snuck into the movies. Maybe he was ashamed to say so. I mean, is there anybody here who hasn't snuck into the movies once or twice when they were a kid? I didn't. Really? Not even once. We didn't have movies. Um. <laughs> Maybe he did lose the knife, and maybe he didn't. He may have lied. Do you think he lied? That's a stupid question. Sure he lied. Do you? You don't have to ask me that. You know my answer. He lied. Do you think he lied? I... I don't know. Uh, now wait a minute. What are you? The guy's lawyer? Listen, there are 12 of us in this room. 11 of us think he's guilty. You're alone. What are you trying to accomplish? If you want to be stubborn in this jury, fine by me. Let me try again found guilty by 12 other guys. Probably right. So, what do you think you're gonna do? We can be here all night. It's only one night. A man may die. Oh, no, come on. She's right. I think we ought to get on with it. Right, let's get on with it. I mean, you're the one holding up the show. Obviously, you don't think the boy's guilty. I have a doubt in my mind. But you haven't really presented us with anything to help us understand your doubt. There's the old man downstairs. He heard it. He heard the boy shrieking out. The woman across the L tracks, she saw it. You know he bought a special night that night, and we don't really know where he was. At the movies. Earlier that night, the boy and his father had a fight. He's been a violent kid all the while, and still that doesn't prove anything. Still, you know? I have a proposition to make. I want to call for a vote. I want the 11 of you to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. If by the end of it there are still 11 votes for guilty, I won't stand alone. We can call in a guilty verdict right now. All right, let's do it. All right, is everyone agreed? I certainly am. That's six. Please. Guilty. 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 Not guilty. Guilty. How do you like that? Who was it? I think we have a right to know. All right, what idiot changed their vote? Is that really the way to talk about a man's life? Whose life are you talking about? The life of the dead or the life of a murderer? I want to know. Who? So do I. Excuse me, this was a secret ballot. No one looked while we did it, but now I want to know. A secret ballot? We all agreed on this point, no? If the person wants to remain a secret... What do you mean? There are no secrets in here. I know who it was. What's the matter with you? You come in here and vote guilty, and then this? Sick preacher starts to tear your heart out with stories about a poor innocent kid who just couldn't help but becoming a murderer. So you change your vote. If that yeah, isn't most sickening! It. I agree with you that the boy is guilty, but let's be fair. Hold it to be fair? That's just what I'm saying! We're trying to put a guilty man in the chair where he belongs. And all of a sudden we're listening to fairy now tales. Now just a minute! Now you let's listen to me! Let's try to keep this organized. It isn't organized, but let's try to be civilized. Please, I would like to say something here. I've always thought that a person was entitled to have unpopular opinion in this country. This is the reason I came here. I wanted to have to write to disagree. Do you disagree with us? Usually, I would. In this 
one case I agree with you, but the point I wish to make is that in my own country, I am ashamed to say that. Oh, now, what do we have to listen to? The entire history of your country? It's always wise to bear in mind the histories of other countries where people don't have the right to disagree. But we do, so let's stick to the subject. Yeah, let's stick to the subject. I want to ask you, what made you change your vote? I want to know too, you haven't told us yet. Why do you think I did change my vote? Because I do, now get out of it. There's nothing for her to tell you. She didn't change her vote, I did. I was going to tell you, but you were so sure of yourself. Sorry, okay, and? Maybe you'd like to know why? I'll tell you why, the kids are- to speak. Thank you. And this gentleman chose not to stand alone against us. That's his right. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone, even if you believe in something very strongly. He left the verdict up to us. He gave for support, and I gave it to him. I want to hear more. The vote is 10 to 2. That's fine. If the speech is over, let's go on. If there were anything in the kid's favor, I'd vote not guilty. I don't see what it is. Neither do I either. Clutching at straws. As guilty as they get, that's the kid, I suppose. It's that one juror that's holding out, but He'll come around, he's got to, and fundamentally, he's a very reasonable man. I guess so. They haven't really come up with one good piece of evidence to back up a not guilty verdict. It's hard, you know. It is, and what does guilty beyond a reasonable doubt really mean? What is a reasonable doubt? Exactly, when a man's life is at stake, what is reasonable doubt? You've gotta have law and order, you've gotta draw the line somewhere, otherwise people just go around knifing each other. There's no doubt there. Two people think so. I wonder why. I really wonder why. You know, you do hear stories about innocent men who are sent off to jail, or even death sometimes, and then years later, things turn up. On the other hand, guilty men are set free. They squeeze out on some technicality, and then they kill again. Look, now that we've had the two chance to cool down, my, I was a little excited a minute ago. You know how it is. I didn't mean to get nasty. Nothing personal. OK. Look, supposing you answer this. If the kid didn't kill him, who did? As far as I know, we are only supposed to figure out whether or not the boy on trial is guilty. We're not concerned with anyone else's motives here. I suppose, but who else had a motive? Remember, he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. This is a very important thing to remember. <laughs> Everyone's a lawyer. Look, suppose you explain to us what your reasonable doubts are. So far, it's only a feeling I have. A feeling. Perhaps you don't understand? No. I don't. A feeling? What are we going to do, spend the entire night talking about your feelings? What about the facts? You've said a mouthful. Look, the old man heard the kid yell, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he hears the father's body falling. Then he sees the kid running out of the house 15 seconds after that. Where is the reasonable doubt in that? That's right. And there's a woman across the street. She saw the boy stab his father through the window. She saw it. Now, that's not enough for you. It's not enough for me. What is enough for you, I'd like to know? How do you like him? It's like talking to dead bone. The woman saw the kid through the windows of a moving elevated train. The train had five cars, and she remembers seeing it through the last two cars. Like, she remembers the most insignificant details. Well, what do you got to say to that? Something doesn't feel right to me. Well, supposing you think about it. Here, lend me your pen. Let's play some tic-tac-toe. Might as well pass the time. This isn't a game. Hey, now wait a minute! This is a man's life. Who do you think you are? All right, let's take it easy. I've got a good mind to belt then you one. I don't want any fights in here. Did you see him? The nerve, the absolute nerve. All right, forget it. It don't mean anything. How about sitting down? This isn't a game. Who does he think he is? Weren't we talking about elevated trains? Yes, we were. So? All right. How long would it take an elevated train going at top speed to pass a given point? What has this got to do with anything? How long would it take? Guess. I wouldn't have the slightest idea. Neither would I. What, what do you think? About 10 or 12 seconds, maybe. That's, that's a fair guess. Anyone else? I would think about 10 seconds, perhaps. 10 seconds, yes. All right, we're agreed. 10 seconds. What are you getting at? This. An elevated train has a given point in 10 seconds. That point is the window of which the killing took place. You could almost reach out of the window and touch the yeah, L, right? That's right. I tried it. So? All right. Question, how many of you live in apartment, I mean, live near the L tracks? I've lived close to them. They make a lot of noise, don't they? I've lived near the L tracks, and when that train goes by and your window is open, the sound is unbearable. You can't even hear yourself think. Okay, you can't even hear yourself think. Get to the point. All right. Now, the man downstairs says that he heard the boy say- He didn't I'm say it. He screamed it. Heard the boy scream, I'm going to kill you. And one second later, heard the body fall. One second, that's the testimony, right? Right. Now, the woman across the L tracks 
says she saw the body fall through the last two cars of the elevated train. Right? Right. So, so the last two cars. The last two cars. What are you giving us here? An elevated train passes a given point in 10 seconds, or two seconds per car. So that means that the elevated train would have had to be going past the old man's window for six seconds or more before the body fell. So as the boy was screaming, I'm going to kill you, the L train was roaring past the old man's nose. It's not possible he could have heard it. What do you mean? Sure he could have heard it. With an L train going by? He said the kid yelled it out. An L train makes a lot of noise. It's enough for me. It's enough for me too. I don't think he could have heard it. Maybe the old man didn't hear it. I mean with the L noise. What are you people talking about? Are you calling the old man a liar? Something doesn't fit. Well, it stands to reason. You're crazy. Why would he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention. Maybe. You keep coming up with these bright sayings. Why don't you send them into the newspaper? They pay two dollars. What's that got to do with a man's life? What were you saying about the old man? You have a right to be heard. Well, it's just that I looked at him for a very long time. He was a very old man with a torn jacket and he carried a cane. I think I know him better than anyone else here. This is a quiet, frightened, insignificant man who has been nothing all of his life. Who's ever had any recognition? His name in the newspapers? Nobody knows him after 75 years. This is a very sad thing. A man like this needs to be recognized and questioned and quoted just once. This is very important. And you're trying to tell us that he would lie about a thing like that just so he can be important. No, he would make himself believe he heard those words and recognize the boy's face. Well, that's the most fantastic story I have ever heard. How could you make up such a thing? I'm not making it up. You must be making it up. People don't lie about things like that. He made himself believe he told the truth. What do you know about it? I speak from experience. What? I am the same. I think we understand now. Thank you. If you want to call yourself a liar, that's all right no, by that me. that is too much. <clears throat> She's a liar. She just told she us so. She did not say she was a liar. She was explaining. Didn't you just admit to being a liar? Please. She was explaining the <clears throat> circumstances so that we could further understand why the old man may have lied. There is a difference. A liar is a liar, and that's all there is to please it. Please have some compassion. Gentlemen, please, chance. we have our job and our duty here. I think they've covered it. I hope we have. All right, is there anything else? <coughs> cough drop? No, thanks. Does anybody want a cough drop? I'll take one. Thank you. Um, I'd like to point out something else here. Uh, I think we've proved that the old man couldn't have heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. Well, I disagree. Let's hear him through anyway. Well, even if the old man did hear it, I mean, this phrase, I'm going to kill you, how many times have each one of you used it? Probably hundreds. You know, if you do that one more time, Junior, I'm gonna murder you. Come on, Rocky, kill him. We say these things every day. It doesn't mean that we're actually going to kill someone. Don't the circumstances alter that somewhat? The old man was murdered. One more thing. The phrase was, I'm going to kill you. And the kid screamed it out at the top of his lungs. That's the way I understand it. Now, don't try and tell me that the kid didn't mean it. Anybody who says a thing like that, the way he said it, they mean it. It's how they mean it. Well, let me ask you this. Do you really think that this boy would scream out this phrase for the whole neighborhood to hear? I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Right? He's a common ignorant swab. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't even speak good English. The boy is clever enough. I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. The vote is 9 to 3 in favor of guilty. I'd like to know why you changed your vote. I think there is a doubt. Where? Where is the doubt? There's the knife. Oh, fine. He talks you into believing fairy tales. Go on, give us the reasons. The old man, too. Maybe he didn't lie, but then just maybe he did. Maybe he doesn't like the kid. Well, if that isn't the end. I believe there is a reasonable doubt. What are you basing it on? Stories that this guy made up? <laughs> he ought to write for Amazing Detective Monthly. He'd make a fortune. Listen, the kid had lawyers, didn't he? Why didn't they bring it up? Lawyers can't think of everything. Oh, brother. You sit in here and pull stories out of thin air. Now I'm supposed to believe the old man didn't get out of bed, run to the door, and see the kid book it down the stairs 15 seconds after the killing? That's the testimony, I believe. And the old man swore to this, yes, he swore to this, only so he could be important? Did the old man say he ran to the door? Uh, ran, walked, what's the difference he got there? I don't remember what he said, but I don't see how he could run. 
He said went. He said he went from his bedroom to the front door. Where is where is the bedroom again? Down the hall somewhere. Down the hall somewhere? Are we to send a boy off to die because it's down the hall somewhere? I thought you remembered everything. Don't you remember that? No, I don't. I don't remember either. Miss Foreman, I like to see the diagram of the apartment. Why don't we have them run the whole trial over just so you can get everything straight? Do you know? Do you know exactly where the bedroom is? Please, a boy's life is at stake. Do you know? Well, Miss Foreman. I heard you. All right, what's this one for? Why are you the only one in this room who wants to see exhibits all the time? I want to see this one too. So do I. And I want to stop wasting time. Are we going to start waiting for all this nonsense about where the body was found? No, we're going to figure out how a man who's had two strokes in the past three years and walks with a cane could have got from his bed to the door of his apartment in only 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. He said 15. How does he know how long 15 seconds is? You can't judge that kind of thing. He said 15. He was very positive about it. He's an old man. You saw it. Half the time he was confused. How could he be positive about, about anything? Well, you know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe you do. Is this what you wanted? Oh, that's right. Thank you. Sure. That's my job. You want this? Yes, please. Do me a favor, quit me up this is over. I looked at that diagram for two hours. Enough is enough. Some of us are interested. Go ahead. Now this is the apartment in which the murder took place. The old man's apartment is directly beneath it and exactly the same. Here are the out tracks, here's the bedroom, another bedroom, living room, bathroom, kitchen, here's the hall, here's the front door, and here are the steps. Now the old man says that he got up out of bed, went out into the hall, down the hall to the front door and opened it just in time to see the boy running down the steps. Am I right? That's the story. Fifteen seconds after he heard the body fall. Correct. Now the bed is by the window. It's 12 feet from the bed to the bedroom door and the length of the hall is 43 feet 6 inches. The old man <clears throat> had to get up out of bed, get his cane, walk 12 feet to the bedroom door, and then walk 43 feet to the door of the apartment in only 15 seconds? Do you think this is possible? You know it's possible. I don't see why not. He would have been in a hurry. He did hear the scream. He can only walk very slowly. It's hard to help him into the witness chair. You make it sound like it's a long walk. It's not. For an old man who uses a cane, it's a long walk. What are you doing? I want to try this thing. I'm going to see how long it would have took him. I'm going to pace off 12 feet, the length of the bedroom. You're crazy. You can't recreate a thing like that. Perhaps if we could see it, this is an important point. It's a ridiculous waste of time. I didn't do it. I can't see any harm in it. Foolish, but... Give that chair, please. Go. Thank you. Now, how far would you say it is to the door of this room? I'd say it's about 20 feet. 20 Just feet. about. Yeah, 20 feet sounds about right. So. From here to back is 40 feet. It's less than the old man had to work through, wouldn't you say? A few feet, maybe. Look, this is absolutely insane. What makes you think you can do this? We can't stop him. Do you mind if I try? According to you, it will only take 15 seconds. We can spare it. Does anybody have a watch with a second hand? Oh, I have. Stomp your foot when you want me to start. That will be the body falling. What time are you from there? Let's say he keeps his cane right beside his bed, right? Right. <clears throat> All right. I'm ready. I'm waiting for the hand to get to 60. Oh, speed it up! You walk twice as fast as that! I think this is even more quickly than the old man walked in the courtroom. No, it isn't. If you want me to go faster, I will. Speed it up a little bit. Stop. Right. What's the time? 15, 20, 25. 39 seconds exactly. That can't be. 39 seconds. Now, yeah, that's interesting. Well, uh, you know. What do you think of that? 39 seconds. 39. And the old cripple swore on his oath that it was 15. He may have been a little bit off on the speed that the old cripple moved at. 24 seconds off. Well, now, you know. Why would you mean to call anyone a liar? And even flying quite a different speed between the old man and you. 
But why, there's still quite a... Quite a discrepancy. It's my guess that the old man was trying to get to the door, heard the murderer run down the stairs, and assumed it was the boy. I think that's possible. Uh, assumed? Uh, now listen to me, you people. I've seen all, all kinds of dishonesty in my day, but this little display takes the cake. What dishonesty? Tell him. You come in here with your heart bleeding all over the floor about slum kids and injustice, and you make up some wild stories. And now you've got some soft-hearted old ladies listening to you. Well, I'm not, and I'm getting real sick of you. What's the matter with you people? The kid's guilty. He's got to die. We're letting him slip through our fingers. Our fingers? Are you his executioner? I'm one of them. Perhaps you'd like to pull the switch. For that kid, you bet I'd like to pull the switch. I'm sorry for you. Don't start with What me. it must feel like to want to pull the switch. Shut up. You're a sadist. Shut up! You want to see this boy die because you personally want it. Not because of the facts. You are a beast. You disgust me. Shut up! Let go! I'll kill him! I'll kill him! Oh, no, come on. You don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? 